preparing for the future as if that future is really not going to be so good uh, or preparing um, for the future without fear. So it's interesting that our minds project into the future so quickly. Our tendency seems to be we were, we, we kind of, you know, regret or uh, cause sorrow to ourselves by thinking about the past. The person who lives here, she's, you know, in her late 70s and um, uh, she has a little problem with her heart. So it's a difficulty for her to walk. So if we're out together, I'll say, Helly, wait here. Uh, you just wait here or slow down and then we'll come back again. And she'll say, no, or you wait here and I'll go get the car and then we get in it together. And she'll say, no, 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 no. That which you leave, it leaves you. In other words, if you say, I can't walk and I'm not going to do it anymore, then even when you need to walk and you want to walk, you won't be able to. It will have left you. Right. It's an interesting principle to think about. And she's amazing. 79 years old, but she will do and walk and do her own thing and look after herself pretty, pretty well. Um, but then there's another aspect to that is that, uh, you know, she can not hear very well a little bit. And she um, she's uh, because she's becoming frail uh, to some extent, she will resist this frailty. And so she becomes quite upset or she'll misinterpret something that you say and she'll get angry about it. And it's OK. I understand. Um, but also there is this resistance to recognizing that, OK, it's OK. I'm a little hard of hearing now and I just need to try a little bit hard or be patient and I understand and understand the resistance too. But my point being that body, the body does become older, but it's the question of keeping my own butt. Yet at the same time, she does all these mental exercises. She goes on these courses on the computer um, so that she doesn't lose her memory or she doesn't become um, not able to be strong, strong mentally. So she does all of these exercises. Um, and so, you know, looking after our own physical well-being, it's not going to happen when your body's already gone uh, already lost its power. So I have to do it now. I have to prepare for my future well-being now. So if I'm preparing for it, if I'm working on it, then I'm not going to worry about the future. Whatever happens, I will have, I will have prepared and I know that I've done the best that I could have done. One of the things that we're afraid of, I think, is regrets. Regrets about what we could have done and we, we didn't do. And so our physical well-being, looking after our own physical well-being is a, if I make, I, I eat well, I rest well, I take care of myself well, then I know that I've done what I could and my future is going to be okay. Whatever extent it's possible, I've done my best. And so, you, for your physical well-being, what is also necessary on spiritual on a spiritual level, actually, is to perform actions that are elevated. If I want to be sure that in future my body is going to serve me, it's going to look after me, is when I have used my body right now to serve others. You know, I'm not going to address the past because I think the past we understand actually that past is finished and I have to move on from it. And OK, I say that kind of as if, you know, move on from it. And I know that it's not that simple and that's not that easy. But for, our, uh, for moving on from the past, I have to start observing myself. I start I have to start seeing the threads of the situations that I've, I have found myself in that have caused me difficulties or pain or suffering. And the interesting thing about the past, I think, is that the more we understand the lessons that we've got to learn, the more we're able to move away from our past. There's always something that we've got to learn from situations that have not worked out for us. So in terms of the past, I'm not going to go there 
on in this session. We could just address, look at the things of the past and how it is that we can be free from the influence of our past. That also is there. But I want to focus on our present. That what, because we're talking about the future, facing off the future. Um, and the, the thing is that we end up thinking about the past and we end up uh, uh, mel um, mulling the past and, and reciting with words, reciting with our thoughts, reciting in our minds, all the things that have gone wrong and that have caused us pain and sorrow. So what I have to do actually is in the present moment, how, what should I be speaking about? What should I be thinking about? What should I be seeing? What are the conversations that I must engage in in order for me to, in a sense, override the past? This is really the intention. Override the past by putting so much positive energy in my pres present moment that I have absolute the guarantee that my future is good. You know, um, people are so interested in their... Um, their astrology and and palmists and and um, people like that are earning so much money these days because people want to know their future why is there so much curiosity about the future it's actually not just curiosity it's a worry about the future um, in a sense subtly we are already aware of of our, our past that has not been so so pleasant but our own contribution to that um, past as well. And so it's really um, thinking about what is it that I can do at the present moment in various different ways, my relationships, first in my own body, my relationships, the quality of my mind, the quality of my wealth, how am I using my wealth? What am I you doing with my wealth? Um, so that the wealth gives me power rather than it gives me, um, uh, it, it takes my power away. And so um, relation, uh, the, uh, in terms of my own physical body, I have to engage in performing actions, physical actions that give power to my body. Instead of worrying about the body and thinking how many hours I've worked and how much I've done and, and as a result become so kind of, uh, my quality of my thinking begins to affect the strength of my body. The more I engage in performing elevated actions, actions that allow me to come closer to my own self, to my own spiritual self, actions that help others um, come, uh, uh, come close to God, to the divine, to the spiritual being, to the spiritual energy, the supreme spirit. Um, these are the actions, whether they're actions, whether it's my eyes that I use to have an elevated vision for someone, to have a positive vision. Let me be able to see their speciality, their beauty, their uniqueness, that truth, rather than negativity. And then when I see something negative, what do I do? I think about it. I, it, it, it plays on my mind over and over again jumping to conclusions about people and their negativity and then responding or behaving with them in a in an aggressive manner or making assumptions about people and their behavior in such a way that it, it's then you know think my mind is constantly working and then what's coming out of my mind is exactly what's in my head and so i'm using all of my senses senses my 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 eyes my ears when I use my ears to, you know, listen to gossip, when other people are ready to talk about other people, put them down, my, my, my common friendship with someone is my, is my common, common enemy, really. Actually, my common friendship with someone is our common, common, common enemy with someone else. And I mean enemy by when I'm, I'm, uh, willing to pick faults at other people and so on. So I, I don't want to concentrate on that, but just use of my physical senses. These are the ears. These are the eyes. This is the mouth. These are the hands that I have used until now out of my own ego for criticism, for negativity, for weakness, uh, um, all of these different aspects. And now I have to use these very senses 
um, to perform elevated actions, actions that serve others. When I do that, then my strength, then my body becomes stronger. You know how in India, particularly, we have this system. I see quite a few Indians in this group and, and, and also others. Um, you know, uh, someone will be very rich and well off and they'll have so many servants in their own homes, they won't even fetch a glass of water for themselves in their own home. Um, means there's, that means there's, um, uh, they have so much power in their own homes, but people will go to the temple to do the mundane of tasks, whether it's sweeping the temple or whether it's the cleaning the temple or whether it's supporting the priest that's doing something in the temple. They save up because they know that to go into a special place, spiritual place, and, and support people in that way or support uh, a place actually is supporting themselves. So, you know, if I want to not fear my physical well being for the future, let me perform elevated actions right now because these are the actions that will bring my future close to me. Then, of course, there's the whole aspect of relationships. You know, relationship, we know that relationships change. Nobody lives forever. If nothing else, nobody lives forever. And so there's that reason why somebody might not be part of my life and at some point in the future. And it's inevitable, inevitable. And yet it's the, also the thing that we resist a lot. And the more I resist something like that, the more sorrow and pain I cause to myself. It hasn't even happened yet often, but I'm worrying about it to, today. And you know, um, uh, we have a saying in India that a worry is like a sickness and it's a sickness that eats away at you and you don't even realize that it's eating away at you. Um, and so in terms of relationships also though, but more importantly, we also know that when we, our relationships are new, when we are um, uh, starting off new relationships, then they have their charm, they have their excitement, they have their energy, they have their vibrancy. But as time goes on, um, things change. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in the sense that we're learning to get to know each other, we're learning to understand each other. And, and in that process, there is maturity that comes, there's emotional maturity that comes within my own self. And I, I really learn the strength of what it means to have something, um, uh, make something work. But a quality, my sense is that is very important in, an aspect of, in aspects of relationships um, is honesty. How or an honesty, I would say, and humility. These are the two qualities or integrity. Integrity, honesty, I'm kind of putting in the same category. Um, and, um, and also humility. How much am I um, in any relationship? How much am I recognizing the role of honesty and integrity? Because when I am honest with someone, today in all ways, um, in the quality of my communication, in the quality of my interaction, in the quality of how it is that we live together, then even if in the moment um, it has its tricky uh, moments and situations come, then ultimately that person will realize what it actually means. Because um, if something happens in a relationship and they may, you know, have, may not have honesty or whatever, but a time will come when they will recognize their own um, lack of honesty, if you like. And it, and in the until I get and while I have to wait for them to recognize that honesty, I learn patience. I learn myself to hold. I learn myself to love and accept whatever it is that's going on. But in in a, in relationships like the, any kind of relationships, you know, whether it's an intimate relationship, whether it's a work relationship, whether it's a family relationship, um, it's cultivating honesty, cultivating humility, and cultivating respect. And 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 as I do that, I also begin to have strength 
and I also begin to have respect for my own self. What is important in relationships too is that to the extent to which I have on a relationship with my own self, the more I spend time in my own company, the more I begin to realize that at the end of the day, I have to have a relationship with my own self um, through silence, through um, through a relationship with God, um, then I also learn to have a relationship with other people. Because, you know, there is only everything, as I said, is changing in our world. Even relationships are changing. There's only one thing that never changes and never, ever changes. And that is the divine, the supreme God, whatever language it is that you choose to use. But that one being, an unconditional spiritual, supreme spirit, spiritual energy that is always the same, always unconditional, always, always giving, never expecting anything in return. And that relationship, that unchanging relationship actually forms, informs me of the change inside of me, informs me of the change that's happening around me and outside of me. That unchanging force and um, my connection with it is my anchor. That unchanging force is my backbone and my support. And when that is happening, then my relationships are not relationships in which I'm always expecting something, I'm wanting something, um, I'm needing to be fed by a relationship to other people, because my own um, fulfillment comes from that relationship with God, with the divine, with the supreme being. And so then when that is my anchor, then what I share, because we all need relationships at the same time, I'm not saying that we don't really need relationships with others, but that anchor actually frees me of fear in terms of my relationships with other people, whether I lose them, they'll go away, they'll change, whatever it is that my fear might be, or I'm not good enough in relationship with other people. There's a whole spectrum that we need to learn about in this regard as well. And so relationships, the more I have integrity, the more I begin to understand the power of relationships with other people, then the more um, I am willing to be able to give, willing to be able to um, support others in whatever capacity, whether it's mother, father, husband, friend, um, brother, sister, cousin, whatever it might be. They are all relationships that we need and they're all relationships that play a different role in our lives. But we also know that they come and go, their quality changes, but what doesn't change inside of me is my own value for those relationships within me too. And then I know that in my future, relationships are there to be to, to, for company to be held, to be nurtured. And I also know at the same time that when I have engaged in relationships with other people, even people in the streets, it doesn't have to be the people that we're related to. I think that, you know, sometimes I see often um, for smallest things, fights break out, out in the streets. So whether it's on a key, in a queue or on an aeroplane or whatever, it, arguments break out for the smallest things and um, and uh, but do I have the patience to deal with all of those different elements that come my way and those uh, those aspects are uh, means actually that when those things are in place whenever I need someone to be with me to be by my side they will always be there they may not be the people I think that should be there, but when I need support, they will always, there will, someone will always be there when I have been able to give that kind of help and support to other people. And so I don't need to worry. You know, I, um, I don't need to worry whether 
how will I live? Who will be there to cook for me when I'm old? If I worry in that way, then I lose my present and I don't have the strength to do the right thing as well. I get into the needy state and then people are pushing me away rather than uh, willing to be with me. You know, it, it, it's always a thing, I think, that uh, in, in, in terms of our relationships with other people, what is it that I'm there and providing for people? Am I someone that is dumping my own stuff on other people, criticism, negativity, cynicism, uh, complaining and sarcasm and all of these kinds of things, all of these negative forms of communication have made home inside of me because life itself you know I perceived life in that way and so if it sits inside of me when someone comes in front of me what happens when someone comes in front of me that's the only thing that will come out of my mouth it's like I'm harboring so much negativity inside me that the, my vibrations become heavy, my words become negative, I'm complaining, and whoever comes in front of me, I have the same old things to say all the time. But yet someone who's moving on, constantly moving on, constantly um, recognizing the flow of life and not holding on, they're bright, they're light, they're happy, they're sharing, they're giving, just coming in the company of someone like that, they don't have to say anything, but the way they live their life makes you feel easy and comfortable and they kind of their company lifts um, a burden for you as well when when we're when you're with them. And so you know it's really interesting to think about how it is that my relationship is my relationship relationships with other people are what is it that people are perceiving from me so then I have nothing to worry about the future 